Welcome to Christ Life Ministries for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of ministry, for edifying the body of Christ. Ephesians 4.12 A work of faith, a work of love, a work of perfection unto a glorious church. together looking for that blessed old Titus chapter 2 verses 11 to 14. We'll be talking today, I believe this message is of very great importance to us, especially in this house and wherever you may be who is following after. We're not saying we are the only ones, but you see this 37th year anniversary is very, very significant. 30 stands for maturity and 7 stands for completion, the completion of maturity. Praise the Lord. So Titus chapter 2 reads from verses 11 to 14. Praise the Lord. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation and appear toward all men. Say all men. Teaching us, teaching us that denying our godliness and worldly loss, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. That speaks about self denial. Verse 13 speaks about self denial. Next verse. Looking for. Verse 12 rather speaks about self denial. Looking for. That blessed hope, say that blessed hope, and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Who gave himself for us? You see, verse 14 now begins to talk about the purpose. You see, today's weekly drama we was talking about the glory and the purpose. The glory is not the purpose. But we need the glory to fill the purpose. So verse 12 speaks about self-denial. Say denying on God loss. Verse um, um, 13 speaks about the revelation of that purpose. I follow me, the glory, rather, the glory of the glory that we need. Now, the next verse, are you with me? Now, began to talk about the purpose. So, we're not just going to hear the glory and then sit down. Praise the Lord. So, who gave himself for us that he might what redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself, say, a peculiar people, zealous of what good works. So he's not talking about going to heaven here. If he's talking about going to heaven, we are not going to do any good works in heaven. So the first verse in verse 12 speaks about denying ungodliness. self denial daily, which we have been doing. The next verse talks about getting the glory. So looking for the glory of God. And then the third the verse 13 talks about what? Us being a peculiar people Zealous of good works. It's right here in the nasty now and now that we need the glory to do the good works. Then you can fulfill your purpose. Praise the Lord. So, let's in Amplified Bible, Titus chapter 2, verse 9, because that is the punchline of my message. In Amplified Bible, he says that awaiting and looking for the fulfillment, the realization of our blessed hope, even the glorious appearing of our great God, say great God, and our Savior, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed One. Isaiah 25, verse 9 says, And it shall be said in that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him. And he will save us. And rejoice to us with joy. And what? We will be glad and rejoice in the salvation. We have come to the season of rejoicing in the salvation of God. Spirit, soul, and body. Praise the Lord. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 12. Because of time, let's read from the Amplified Bible. First of all, I preach from this thing. This is the focus of my message today. When that Kairos moment as a body, as a local body, in which God is calling us to fulfill our prophetic destiny. So this 37 years of faithful ministry of our fathers is not just something that is happening. The Bible says that, you know, like Pastor Kule was teaching Revelation about 22, there are things written concerning you and I in this book. There are things also written concerning this local body in the written word of God. Praise the Lord. So what does this say in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 12 in NIV? That as you look forward, let's you as you look forward in NIV, as you look forward to the day of God and speed is coming. Say, so as you look forward to the day of God and speed is coming. And, um, in King James says, 
hasten the coming of the Lord. That this Lord, the, we can either delay it or hasten it. Depending on what we do. Now, just to explain for those that are here for the first time or listening message, there are four phases of his coming or his appearing like Pastor has taught us. So he will first of all come in us and he's going to come to us. He's going to come for us at the rapture and then at the liminal reign. So it's going to come. The coming we are talking about today is the coming in us. After he comes in us, he's now going to come to us. Let's just put a scripture behind because Pastor just added this you know, recently about it coming to us. Galatians chapter 1 verse 15. Galatians 1 15. Where Paul was talking. Galatians 1 15. We're going to read verses 15 and 16. Paul was talking. And look at what he said. He said, but when he pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his word, grace. Number, next verse. To reveal his son in me, that I might preach him among the heathen, immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood. So there came a time in Paul's life that has come in this ministry and for all who have been following after, for God to reveal his son in us. So it's going to come in us in perfection and fullness and it's going to come to us. But I say it shall be admired in all his saints. Are you with me? Then it's now going to come even for us at the rapture. Then it will come with us for God's millennial reign. Praise the Lord. So his coming here speaks as we've been taught of his coming in us in perfection and fullness with the imminent manifestation of the glory of God. Colossians chapter 1 verse 27. It's a scripture we all know but it's important for us to mention it because it's very important. Colossians chapter 1 verse 27. What does it say? To whom God will make known what is the riches of the glory of this world? Mystery. Like Pastor Kule was sharing. Among the Gentiles, the secret. Which is what? Let's read together. Christ in what? In you, the hope of glory. So that is the hope we are looking for. We are not looking for the rapture now. That's what I know. We are not looking for the resurrection now. But the hope that we are looking for is Christ in us, the hope of glory. Second Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 10. The Bible says, the matter of three witnesses, let everyone be established. Second Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 10. says that when it shall come to be glorified in the saints, and to be admired, coming to us, in all them that believe, because our testimony among you was believed in that day. Praise the Lord. As another one, I'm not mentioned, Pastor, no, I think he mentioned in the Bible study, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 14. He talks about us inheriting the same glory that Christ inherited. To settle for anything less is to settle for Zohar. Are you with me? Say, where are you? Let's read together. Where are you? He called you. From Zohar, put your name there. By our what? Gospel. To the obtaining of what? The glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. So it makes it very clear, folks. That is our calling. That is our destiny. We are called to, you see, because I'm getting out of myself. If you don't get the glory, you cannot fulfill the fullness of your purpose. We need that glory to fulfill the fullness of our purpose. Praise the Lord. Now, the purpose of this message today is to alert us and to quicken, to enable us to quicken our pace spiritually. You see, as you continue. It will allow us and to quicken our peace spiritually. You see, if you look at the things that are going on in the world, it's enough to discourage you. I begin to wonder, will this thing happen? But I'm here to tell you, the scripture says, before the pots can fill the tons, it will take them away in his wrath. You see, I don't care what is happening in the nation. The Bible says, the prophets of us have said, before your part, the part speaks about the children, those of us in the house of God. But again, Christians that are pressing toward the mark of pumping the life of God into their physical body, their part. He said, before they can fill the tongues, the messenger of Satan, he said, he will take them away. Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 16, Amplified Bible. Let's just read it. Put some scriptures behind it. I said, the purpose of this message is to put us to quicken our pace, to quicken our pace. In the Amplified Bible, I said, stay with the scriptures I quote. Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 16 in Amplified Bible. Okay? Because of time, let me go and open it. Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 16 in the Amplified Bible. Just a second, it's important for us. I'm trying to lay the foundation for what we are sharing today. Okay, thank you. Please kindly stay with what the scriptures I quote so we don't get distracted. What does it say? In that day, which is today. It shall be said to you, Scripture, Pastor Christian Center. Fear not, O Zion. 
Let not your hands sink. Sink down. Or be slow and listless. The next scripture. Romans chapter 9, verse 28 in the NIV. Romans 9, 28 in the NIV. Are we there? NIV, I said. God have mercy on us today. What does this say? Pastor has preached many times from his same time. For the Lord, what will carry out his sentence on earth with speed and what? Finality. God wants to close this program with the earth. With speed and what? Finality. First John chapter 3, verses 2 to 3 in the King James Bible. It talks about that hope. First John chapter 3, verses 2 to 3 in the, in the King James Bible. It says that, and hereby we do know that we know him. I don't think that's the right scripture. Three, I said not to. First John chapter three, verse two. He said, he's talking about he that had this hope in himself, purified himself. Are we there now? Okay. He said, Beloved, he said, Beloved. Now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we shall know that when it shall appear, we shall be what? Be like him. For we shall see him as he is. We'll see him in each other. Next verse. That says, And every man between you and I, that had this hope in him, purified himself, even as he is pure. So, so motivation for us unto purity, a motivation for us to run the race that God has set before us. He said, don't let your hands drop. Praise the Lord. Like I said, as a local body, we are in the season of the manifestation and it's time of the realization of that blessed hope like we read earlier on. We have experienced 37 years of God's faithfulness to our fathers in keeping the word of his patience. I'm taking it from Revelations now. Just flow with me because of time. And not denying his name. Like Joseph held onto his God-given dream. That is where we are now as a body. Praise the Lord. Like I said, like 30 is God's number for maturity. 7 is God's number for completion. What are we saying? We are going to look at the type today from the life of Joseph. At the age of 30, he came out of prison when he stood before Pharaoh. Genesis chapter 41, verse 46. Thank you, Lord Jesus. What does he say? And Joseph, let's look at And Joseph was 30 years old when he stood before Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And Joseph went out from the presence of Pharaoh and went throughout all the land of Egypt. This was 2014, when the church celebrated his 30th anniversary. That was when Joseph came out of prison. And he stood before Pharaoh. And we know the story, of course. He interpreted Pharaoh's dream. And then that began the seven years of plenty. In which he began to store corn. Corn there being a type of the word of God. Because he had a dream. Pharaoh had a dream of seven years of plenty and seven years of famine. So when Joseph came out of prison, are you with me? And stood before Pharaoh. That marked the beginning of the seven years of plenty. Are you with me? So we found that seven years of plenty. In which you read the weekly drama, daily drama, it, it just keeps coming out. I was in the church office some days ago. I was talking to Shola. I'm sorry, Sister Shola. I, I, I said, ah, it's been a long time since I've read the weekly drama. I've not gone to, I mean, maybe new ones have come out. He said, Pastor has stopped producing weekly drama. What does that mean? We are feeling syllabus, folks. See, everything we are saying using the, is the same thing. There's nothing else to say again. They have, they, have, they have finished the syllabus. Are you with me? <laughs> so, there is a famine coming. Are you with me? So, I said that in 2014, when we celebrated the 38th year anniversary of this local body of Christ, by the grace of God. Remember that convention, you know, double glory that we have, Papa Ralph, Dr. Eshenwa, uh, um, Pastor Fred and uh, Dr. Adebo, uh, Adebo Akimbo Hoye, that they came. But Joseph's dream of his brothers coming to bow down before him did not come to pass until the end of his seven years of plenty, by which he was 37 years old. That is where we are now. That is where we are now. The years of plenty are over. This is our 37th year anniversary. Genesis chapter 41, verse 53. Just soaking what I'm saying. We are beginning to see the things written concerning us as a body in the volume of the book. Praise the Lord. 
41 verse 53. What does it say? And the seven years of plenteousness that was in the land of Egypt were ended. That's when they stopped the big remnant. There was nothing else to say again. All we are doing now is like we are, folks, there's nothing I'm preaching that is new. You know what I do most of the time? I, tell you secret. I look at pastors, I mix about three together. That's it. Oh. That has to be a faithful echo. I just take this one, I take this one, I take this one, and mix it together. Uh-huh. I come and serve it to you. Mind you, it was what the Lord Jesus Christ, they gave him the five fish and the, uh, five loaves and two fish. He broke it and gave it to the disciples. They didn't have any other message. It was the fish and the bread they gave John, Peter, James, and John, including Judas, that were serving the people. What am I saying? There is so much in this storehouse of Joseph. Too much. That can feed thousands of people. I will. That's what I'm doing. God to do. I said, which marked the beginning of the seven years of famine that his brothers came. Genesis chapter 41, verses 54, 56, and 57. Genesis 41, 54. And the seven years of death began to come. According to, as Joseph had said, and the death was in all lands, say all lands, but in all the land of Egypt there was bread. So in scripture, Pastor Christ said that there is bread. So you see, Naomi is going to hear that God has visited them in scripture, Pastor Christian Center. She's going to hear. Verse 56. 56, Lord, time. 56, please. Lord, have mercy on me. 56, please. And the famine was over all the face of the earth. And Joseph, and Joseph opened all the storehouses and sold unto Egyptians. And the famine waxed sore in the land of Egypt. 57. And all countries came into Egypt to Joseph for to buy corn because that the famine was so sore in all the lands. Are you with me? Genesis chapter 42, verse 6. The said time, scripture pastor, to favor you has come. And Joseph knew his brethren. Is that what I said? But, verse 6, please. Verse 6, please. Let's take it a bit, a little bit of time. And Joseph was the governor over the land. And it was told, it, it was that, it was that sold. It was he, sorry. That, let's read it again. And Joseph was the governor over the land. And he was, and he it was that sold to all the people of the land. And Joseph's brethren came and bowed down themselves before him with their faces to the earth. You see, it's a father-son relationship. You know, Joseph can definitely not be giving everybody food. That would be tantamount to what Moses tried to do. So he will give those that are under him. Those ones will give this one, they'll keep on giving. Are you with me? But it's from Joseph. Because it was Joseph that laid up the corn. Now, what I want us to see is this. It took seven years for him to lay up in store. In this 37th year was when his dream was fulfilled. It wasn't in the 38th year. You see, the dream that he had was that his brothers came and his father and his mom and bowed down before him. The bowing did not occur until they came, which was after the first seven years of plenty. It was the first year of famine that they came to Egypt. 42 verse 6. Have we read it? Yes. That's when the dream came to pass. That is where we are now. That is where we are now. We are smack in the will of God. Now, these are types and shadows. Now, it'll be a little bit to the left or to the right. But that is where, where that's like, we don't know the day or the hour, but we know the time when that season. Praise the Lord. So, what does it speak to us? Revelation chapter 3, verse 9. 3 9. What does it say? Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and to worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. So when Joseph's brothers came, it's like the type of those of the synagogue of Satan. Say they worship at your feet. What does it mean to be a synagogue of Satan? It speaks of Christians whose body, their synagogue, is being controlled by the same nature. Wood, hay, and stubble. Stop looking at the physical building. 
The synagogue is your temple. Talks about the foolish virgins that do not have oil in their vessel. That is the synagogue of Satan who have refused to follow purpose and destiny. Food, hay, and struggle. So they are going to come because the flesh is going to create a problem for them. And they will come to Joseph. And then you must be willing to give them corn. You must be willing to forgive. You see, the issue is this. Though. We need to understand the glory and the purpose. We are not glorying the fact that somebody has left church and has come back. So he's come back to me. That is pride and arrogance. Because it was not only Joseph's brothers that came to him. The world came to him. Well, he, he, he was generous in his forgiveness. That's what God is calling us to. So it's not just that we have corn laid up so we can say, yes, I have corn. No. It's so that we can feed them with the corn of the word of God. So that they took the, the, this, this open door that God is giving, they will not die in this famine. All these things that are going on in the world at this time, hearts of men failing them. Are you following me? So understand what I'm saying. So, what are we saying? The Bible speaks about a famine of the world. Amos chapter 8, verses 11 to 12 in the King James Bible. It is similar to the time of Eli and Samuel, where the Bible says there was no word. There's a scarcity of the word. When we begin to see that thing begin to happen, what it means is this, there's a change of priesthood from Eli to Samuel. One say, and Eli and Samuel ministered unto the Lord. And the word of the Lord was very scarce in those days. Now let's read Amos 8. Behold, said the whole, the days come, said the Lord God, that I what? Send, say, send a famine in the land, and not a famine of bread, nor of thirst of water, but of what? Say, hearing the words of the Lord. Next verse. And they shall wander from sea to sea, and from the north even to the east, and they shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord, and shall not find it. The only place to get corn today. It's in Egypt. And you have to go and meet Joseph. Are you with me? So we're not talking about physical famine. We're talking about a famine of the world. As able to make God's people feel their prophetic destiny. That's able to deliver the nations from the bondage of corruption. There's a famine. They don't have an answer. Nobody has the answer. America does not have it. We don't have it in Africa. Nobody has the answer. There's a de 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 uh, variant now of Corona. What was it called? Delta variant. As we are making a vaccine, the owner is showing, wearing up his head. Satan is bad. But the Bible says, for this purpose, was the Son of God manifested that he was what? Destroy the works of the devil. So, I put it in my notes. I said, for us, our dream is the realization, said the realization of the hope of our calling. We are about to give birth to the promise. We are about to give birth to Isaac. And Pastor Kule was sharing this morning. My mom was sharing, exhorting us before we came for the service. We are about to give birth to the promise, to laughter. Isaac's name means laughter. To the life of God being made manifest in our mortal flesh, like Abraham and Sarah. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verses 10 to 11. We need to begin to understand the types and shadows and what they mean. What does it mean to give birth to Isaac? Isaac was the child of promise. Are you with me? You go to the book of Hebrews. He talked about the promise. He said, when God swore, he said, you could not swear by any other. He said, the blessing I will bless you. He multiply, multiply you. I follow me. If you read that part that Pastor Kunle quoted, when Isaac, uh, Abraham offered up his son, God said two things. He said that your seed, say your seed, shall possess what? The gates of her enemies. Paul comes and says, that seed is not seed, but as unto seed. One. Then the second thing he said is this. He said that your seed shall be a blessing to the nations. Paraphrasing. Two things. They will first of all possess the gates of her enemies. The gate there talks about your five physical senses. When you allow the life of God to dominate your five physical senses. No matter the same nature or Satan occupying your gate. Deny the life of God. When you get to that stage, you have given back to Isaac. He also said the next stage is that that seed, that child of promise. Are you following me? If God is going to make it, it will be a blessing to all nations. Isn't that what he said? Why? Because of his spirit without measure. Because of the ability of the mind of Christ. Now, listen to this. Now, it could be, your Isaac could be you laying down your job, doing what God has called you to do. I'm not taking away from it. 
are you with me? But what it means in detail for what we have been taught is this. Is that after you give birth to Isaac, the life of God being made manifest in your born flesh. Are you with me? You now have to lay it down. You lay down your own agenda and take up God's agenda. That is, you don't receive the glory and then do your own thing. You now take that glory. That's why they laid Isaac on the altar to do the will of God. The Bible says that you now go to the nations. Are you following me? Say, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So now become God's son. That whosoever believes in should not perish, but should not take that everlasting life. That was the type and the shadow that Abraham fulfilled when he laid up Isaac on the altar. So give, give God the rights, legal basis for Christ to come and die on the cross to save mankind. So we too now, we are going to do the same. We have to inherit. Are you following me? The life of God, the anointing, the glory, whatever you want to call it. The double glory. Like it was called during that conversion party years ago. Then they will now, the fathers will now lay you on the altar. What does that mean? Like Pastor Shea, you now find the situation whereby we are going for missionary trips. Prof will leave his job for some time. He'll go for two months. Then they will come back. Are you following me? So he's no longer living after his own will. Are you with me? So that is how we are going to be a blessing to the nations. Praise the Lord. So let's continue. We are about, I've said, yes, 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 yes. Let's look at Psalm 126, verses 1 to 2. No, we are talking about Joseph's dream that came to pass after the first seven years of plenty. Now, let's read. We're talking about dreams today. I said that our dream is to realize the, 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 the hope of his calling. Psalm 126, verses 1 to 2. So when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Our God is about to turn our captivity from spiritual immaturity to spiritual maturity. Next verse. Then was our mouth filled with what? Laughter. We gave birth to Isaac. And our tongue with what? Singing. Then said they among the what? Hidden. The Lord has done great things for us. Even we are in Scripture Pastor Christian Center. Or whoever is following after. So I'm not personalizing the know. These are just principles. I'm talking to us today because we are doing it. But it's not only for us here. It's for those that are following after. God didn't keep the promises for us alone. Are you following me? So we should not even think that we are the only ones. Like they told you, there was somebody casting out devil in your name. He said, you used to say, don't forgive poverty. Praise the Lord. So, what are we saying? For the past 37 years, like I put in my notes, our parents have gone forth weeping, bearing precious seed. And they are now returning, rejoicing, bringing our sheaves with us. Same Psalm, Psalm 126, verse 6. The seed of the first of the first fruits. In those days, when they brought the first fruit, the, the high priest would wave the sheaf. Then was a mouth. No, no, no. I said verse 6. 6. 6. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 6. Say, he that goeth forth. And we bear, bearing precious seed, shall what? Say, doubtless. That means of a shorty. Come again with rejoicing, bringing his what? Sheaves with him. So God is going to wave you and I as the first of the first fruits from beyond the rivers of Ethiopia. Praise the Lord. Genesis chapter 37, verse 7. So let us look quickly at Joseph's dream. It's about to come to pass. I remember I said it didn't come to pass until the, when he was 37 years old. Yes, chapter 37, verse 7. Look at what he told his brother. He says, For behold, we are binding sheep in the field. And lo, my sheep arose and also stood upright. And behold, your sheep stood one about and made what? Obeisance. Obeisance. Obeisance to my sheep. I will make them of the synagogue of Satan. Those whom Satan dominates their will, mind, their emotions. I get into the same nature who don't believe in this message. You come and to watch it before your feet. Praise the Lord. That speaks about the five wise virgins. Say they had oil in their lamps and also in their vessels. That's why I said this to ginger us up, to run like never before, to hasten the coming, to spirit. Praise the Lord. The second type I have here. 
is about David and his mighty men. I discovered David's mighty men were 37. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 2 Samuel 23, verse 8. Let's first of all read. 2 Samuel chapter 23, verse 8. We read two verses. Then we'll now go to verse 39. And these be the names of the mighty men whom David had, the Tactomite that sat in the seat, chief among the captains. The same was Adino, the S knight. He lift up his spear against 800 whom he slew at one time. Verse, verse 39. Verse 39. Uriah was the last person they mentioned in that chapter. And what? 30 and 17. Oh, so he speaks again as a type of the mighty men of David. So you see, through all the different forum that God has opened up, Africa prayers, you know, good morning, Jesus, in particular at this time, you know, the Wednesday prayer school, David has been raising mighty men. Mighty men that know how to use the sword skillfully. The Bible says that when they came to join David, that some of them could use both hands to hold the stones. That speaks about using revelation knowledge to defeat the enemy. So all these years, David has been raising up mighty men, of which you and I are part of those mighty men. 37 in number. Using them as a type. Praise the Lord. So I put him as I said, David and his 37 men are the ones that took Zion. I said, out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God has shined. So what is the assignment that God has given us? We are to take Zion in this season. Going by the way of the water spout. Were well, those 37 men? They were not perfect. Joab was amongst them, but they were submitted to David. And David said something. When they came to join him in drove, he said, Have you come to join me or to betray me? So they entered into a covenant, like a marriage covenant. With David. Notice, David could not go alone to possess Zion. Neither can the mighty man go alone to possess Zion. But you see, you must recognize those in authority over you. If you really think that this mighty man did, some of them will stand to defend a land of lintels. They will 300. It will defeat 800 like we read. He said, Bible said, he fought so much that the sword cleaved his hand. The word became flesh. He said he defeated Moab, lion-like men. Pride began to deal with them. But what I want you to see today is this. It is David that had the unction. God now took the bold unction upon each of those mighty men of David, including Uriah. So he can take Zion. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty. God has shined. To the water spout. I don't have time to go there, sir. I, 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 let me just stick because of time. You can only go the way of the water spout to travail. It said, deep, call it unto deep, at the noise of the water spout. There are waves that have gone over me. You cannot possess Zion, the perfection of beauty, if you don't travel in prayer. I, I don't intend to go there. We read it last time. Second, 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 what is it again? Second um, Corinthians chapter 5, I think verse 4. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 4. Please put it there since we've gone there. You see, that's why the, the church can't take Zion. Are we there? What do you say? But we in this tabernacle or this synagogue do what? Groan. There's no other interpretation for that. Is this a, this a speaking tongues? This is speaking tongues. So why is the body of Christ denying the truth? Handling the word of God deceitfully. That's what this is. Dishonesty of us. He said, for we that are in this tabernacle do groan. Being burdened. Not for that we should be unclothed. I said, I don't want to die. Not for I'll be unclothed. But what? Clothed upon. Say clothed upon. That mortality. Say mortality. Might be swallowed up of life. That is the key. That is the technology. That is the technology of which you are going to take the water spout to take Zion. It's the same time it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 10, 11. The life of Christ be made manifest in my mortal body. Let's continue. 
Thank you, Lord Jesus. So, having said all that, it's very simple. The dream is starting. Say the dream is starting. And the interpretation is sure. I've given you two examples. Joseph at 37 and the 37 mighty men of David. Daniel chapter 2, verse 45. Daniel 2, 45. Let's just read to put some scriptures behind it. So we are basing our faith on what the Bible says. For as much as thou sawest the stone, that stone again speaks about the love of God. That was cut without hands. The perfection of the love of God. Pastor has taught us over and over from this scripture. Was cut out of a mantle without hands. And as he break in pieces, the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver and the gold, the great God had made known to the king as he's telling us today. What shall come to pass hereafter? Let's go to and what the dream is. Starting and interpretation thereof. Sure. It shall surely come to pass. It's not a day to leave church, folks. <laughs> if you are saying it's a day to come back. Like Naomi. Genesis chapter 41 verse 32. Genesis chapter 41 verse 32. Let's read. And for that the dream was doubled. I've doubled it to you now. I follow him by the mercy and the grace of God under covering. Unto Pharaoh twice. It is because the thing is established by God. And God will what? Shortly. God will shortly bring it to pass. A quick work will the Lord do. And cut it short in righteousness. So why is this message very important? Where did you can see that is what we are looking for. That is where we are now. You know, message is very important. You know why? If, for example, if you don't have a timetable, you don't know what to prepare for. But if you have a timetable, let us say, for example, biology is next, next week Friday. And then um, physics is tomorrow. You know, you would rather begin to prepare for physics today and leave biology till after physics. You know why? Why are we seeing one of my small says It's coming to me. You see, that's why we are not preparing for biology rapture now. We are preparing for physics tomorrow, which is coming in us. Why? Number one, we are in the season of the manifestation of the glory as we approach the Feast of Tabernacles. It's the season. It does not necessarily have to be in September. But we know the time and we know the season. Are you with me? No one knows the day or the hour. But the Bible says you know the times and the season. I don't have time to tell me. First Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 1. But I'll read from Psalm 102 that I quoted, verse 13. Psalm 102 verse 13. 102 verse 13. It says, Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion, for it is time to favor her. Yea, the set time is come. Verse 16. 16. When the Lord shall beat up Zion, you can put scripture past scripture. Let, 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 let leave it as Zion because Zion is not only us. We are a Zion. There are many Zion churches scattered all over the world. So we're not the only one. But we have to declare the prophetic word. When the Lord shall build up Zion, it shall appear what? In his glory. So it's about to appear in his glory. That's one of the reasons why we are sharing this message. Number two, the glorious appearing in us, the glorious appearing in us will lead to the doing of the zealous works of a spirit without measure. Titus chapter 2, verse 14, that we read earlier on. Titus 2, 14. He said, who gave himself for us that we, that what he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself, say, a peculiar people, zealous of what? Good works. First Peter chapter 2, verse 9 says the same thing. Say, you are a chosen generation. Are we there? Say, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people. You are not ordinary. See, you are not ordinary. Christ in you is what makes the difference. That as you show forth the presence of him, and that version says virtues of him, power. Who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light? Praise the Lord. So the third point I have here, already like I said, I say, 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 Titus says zealous of good works. So pastor has taught us, we have the good works of charity, just to run across it, run, run through it, which is given that everybody does, including unbelievers. You don't really need any supernatural power to do that. The second one is the good works. I will use this word most of time of a spirit with the measure. Are you following me? When we pray for the sick, we lay hands on them. You know, we see that in Mark chapter 16, verse 17 downwards. It says, and they shall recover. I always say that how God anointed Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost of power, went about doing good, killing all those that are oppressed of the devil. 
But see why this message is coming now. We have seen those ones in a measure. God wants us to give us the fullness. Which is now for us to receive the spirit without measure. Where he said in John chapter 14 verse 12, he said, the works that I do, shall you do. And what? Greater works. The anointing without measure. <laughs> Folks, we're in that season. I'm trusting God to get to some things today. Very important. So why do we need that? Like Pastor taught Isaiah chapter 2 verses 2 to 3. It's so that we not only get them born again. You see, the problem with church today, people have gotten born again. But we have not been to disciple men. Say, we have not been able to disciple men. Why? He commissions to make disciples of all ethnos. How come I'm not, able to, I'm not talking about people getting born again? I'm not saying about the, the commission not to start churches in every village. When they come out, we say, no. It's to disciple men into the image of the Lord Jesus Christ for the perfection of the saints, for the work of a ministry, for the edifying of the word of Christ. Did we all come? In your defeat, on the Son of God, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. That is discipleship. But how can you disciple somebody when you have not been discipled? If you read that story about David, as I'm talking, when they came to meet David, I said they are battled with him for three days, eating and drinking. They don't have time to turn there. But I've been eating and drinking now during that three days as a type. I said that today, tomorrow, I'll cast out devils and do chaos. And in the third day, I will perfect it. When they came to join David in droves, when I saw his, when I was down there, he says that they were eating and drinking for three days. Then David sent them away. Praise the Lord. So we are to make disciples of men. Isaiah chapter 2, verses 2 to 3. He said, People will come that day and say, Come to the, let us go, and shall come to pass in the last days that the mount of Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills, and all nations what shall flow, all ethnos shall flow into it. And many people will go and say, Come ye, let us go up the mount of the Lord, the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us his ways, and we will walk in his paths, for out of Zion shall go for the Lord, and the will Lord from Jerusalem. So they will now come and learn his ways. They will not be like you know of Israel. The Bible says Moses knew his ways, but the Israelites didn't ask. No, they are coming. They want to know. Prof, how did you raise the dead? And you come and show them. Say there's no big deal. There's no big deal. You just use this uh, arm of blood. Join good morning, Jesus. Say, are you mean? Is that serious? Is that easy? They say, yes. I come to learn. I made it very simple so we can relate to it in our, in our lives. Praise the Lord. Number three is a day of vengeance and comfort for those that money is on. Isaiah 61, verses 2 to 4. Let's read. Isaiah 61. It is the day of vengeance. So, you know, the Lord Jesus Christ did not fulfill this part. That is what we are called to fulfill. The nations are ripe for this. The blood of Christ is ripe for this. Let's see what God will do in the month of new beginnings. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that month. So, it's the same thing. It's the same season. To appoint to them that month is and to give unto them Beautiful as she is the all of joy for money, garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, and they might be called the priests of righteousness, the planting of Lord, that they might be glorified. Next verse. And shall build the whole waste. They shall raise up the former traditions, and they shall repair waste cities and the desolations of many generations. A lot of things that our leaders in this nation have done. It is the manifestation of the sons of God that repair these desolations they have brought us into. A quick walk. Will the Lord do and cut it short in righteousness? Job 34, verse 20. We don't have to turn there. Job 34, verse 20 to 30. It talks about the judgment upon the soul leadership, the rebellious leadership, stubborn and rebellious in the body of Christ. Also upon political leaders. He said, The moment they shall die, and who shall be troubled at midnight and pass away, for the magic shall be taken away without hand. You can read it when we get home of time. Job 34 verses 20 to 30. speaks about the judgment of God that has come upon the soul leadership and the political leadership, the political pharaohs that are in the land. Psalm 144 verses 11 to 15. Pastor has taught us from this. You can go and check it later because of time. He says, read me of strange children whose mouth speak vanity, whose right hand is the right hand of force. Which that right hand there speaks in particular about the body of Christ. The right hand is the right hand of intercession. The Lord Christ sits at the right hand of God the Father, ever living to make intercession for us. So he talks about whose right hand is the right hand of falsehood. It's those that are that, that he's talking about intercession that are offering up strange fire. Now we can to say, you know, 
Deliver me from the hand of these strange children. That is the problem. That's why God's people are not growing. They are keeping them in spiritual captivity. But God is going to read himself. Whose mouth speak vanity and their right hands are under falsehood. That. Next verse. Our sons may be as plants grow up in their youth. Our daughters may be as corners and polished after the season of the palace. Next verse. That our gunners may be full according to all manner of stock. That our sheep may bring forth thousands and ten thousand in our streets. Our awesome may trunk labor, you know, happy, blessed. Lots of time. Well, you know, the scriptures, you can check them out. You see, in Ezekiel's temple, the water issued down from the threshold at the right hand, speaking of intercession. So if what is coming out from the temple is corrupted, it's going to the nation. So you can see what is going on. The problem is what the guys are in Abuja. It is the problem is what is with the church. But I say you are the salt of the world. If it's salt has lost its savor, then it's good for nothing that you trodden out under feet. Say you are the light of the world. The politicians are not the light of Nigeria. Our president is not the light of Nigeria. We are the light. But many today in the body of Christ have hid their light under the bushel by not calling after this message. They kept it on their flesh. The flesh is dominating them. So what is Israel night of the temple is no more pure. Like they say in the time of Elijah, Elisha, they said this land is good. But the water is what? It's, it's, it's not good. It's not pleasant. So God is raised up an Elisha ministry. Notice it was Elisha that inherited double portion. You remember that convention was double glory. That is what we need to change the waters of Israel. The fourth point I have here is that God wants us to redeem the time because the days are evil. Ephesians 5, 16. If you don't redeem the time, back, buy back the time, many are going to die. Because of our spiritual slothfulness. Are you with me? But there's a timetable. There's a timetable for us to follow. If we do not hasten the time, what about those children that are still in captivity? A better secondary school. Could that have been possible if there was the manifestation of the sons of God? And you tell them, all this one that you are, you are saying you don't know where they are, they are in so so and so place. Then you go there, you smite them with blindness. Then you bring them and the children back to Kaduna. And I say, oh, give them food, give their breakfast food. Tell them, no, no, are you the one that caught them? That's the kind of thing we're talking about. Because we must be ready to reach out to love. Part of that love will be judgment. If I be a man of God, I don't have to go there. Let fire come down and consume. You are doctors wherever you are. And I will consume them. I will not consume your children. You are here to say greater works. Say greater works. Then this shall you do. You have not seen anything. You are talking about what Moses did. Moses said, if I be a man of God, he said, <coughs> he said, the Lord will do something he has never done before. And what happened? Koran and Data, the land opened up. I saw that, and they went straight to hell. They went straight to hell. I went to hell. <laughs> so, Romans chapter 8, verses 19 to 23. King James by, uh, version. Are we there? We're going to read through 19 to 23. For the endless expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who had subjected the same in hope. Next verse. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Next verse. For we know, say what we know, that the whole creation, including Nigeria, Gunnets and travelled in pain together until now. Next verse. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits, the earnest of the Spirit. Even we ourselves grown, say we grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to be the redemption of our body. That word redemption that Pastor has taught us, we are waiting for the transformation of our physical body. Like when we were sharing the other day, when we explained that transformation of our physical body, we we'll just be going about different duties, wherever God has posted you. Then Nigeria, as I said, there must be timing 
we Nigeria will not touch the hem of his hand just garments. And that will flow. And immediately, this blood, this, 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 this flow of blood of this woman, the bleeding will stop. All these things that we see, the woman killed every day, it will stop. But it's not until there's a manifestation of the sons of God, a type of Christ there, and he appears on the scene. The nation will say, ah, there is, I heard this passing by. I say, if I can touch, that will be like they will come. That will say that strong men, they will come in chains. They will, say, they, will, they will come and listen to the word of God. People in different government pastors, they will come. They will come and hear the word. They will see the wisdom of God on how to solve the problems they are facing. Praise the Lord. So, how do we attend unto this? Now, say number one. We need to pray to get the spirit of wisdom and revelation of that blessed hope. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 17 to 18. It says that you, see, you need to, before, before you can start doing anything else, you need to have a revelation or a vision of what you are going through. So it's not some going and shine, it's not physical. God needs to shine the light upon your heart. So the first thing to get that revelation, Ephesians 1 7 says that, that God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. And knowledge. So the eyes said, the eyes of your understanding. Before that, enlightened. Tsunami was not enlightened before. To know the hope of his calling, the riches of the glory of his inheritance, and the exceeding greatness of his generation power to us what we believe. So we need that. That's it, number one. The second thing we need to do, which we are doing already, is daily putting on the whole armor of God, which is love, and praying with all kinds of prayer in the spirit daily. So that's what you do when you join Good Morning Jesus. But it doesn't end there. We take those same principles to pray about different areas of our life. Praise the Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18. Saying, praying always with all kinds of prayer in the spirit. And what you don't do with persevering and support for all men. Number three. Say, looking. Looking for what you have seen by revelation. See, it is the revelation you have. That will not determine what you are looking for. So when somebody comes to you and says, this is the hope of his calling. You can say, no, that is not it. So you are not easily led astray. By people that deceive people in the body of Christ today. And tell that I, heaven is their goal. But you see, the Bible, you know what told Moses? He said, build according to power. So you can begin to build according to power. Because this is what God showed him. So you can have a vision. You can run with it. That will determine a lot of... You see, once you have that, you don't need to pray about many things. It will determine what you do. It's very easy. It will determine... For example, just make it very simple. Can you imagine if I have to catch a flight in about... Let's say... Two hours time. <laughs> I'm going to round up the message as fast as I can. Do you get what I'm to say? Why? Because I need to redeem the time. Because time is gone. So you don't have time for things that are unnecessary. I said, looking for what we have already seen in the Revelation. To look is to watch and to pray always. Say, to look is to watch and pray always. Because of time, I'll just summarize. Giving all diligence to speed is coming in us by watching and praying always with our words. Say with our words. And our thoughts. Second Peter about three verse twelve. We already read it. And to speed is coming. This we do by washing our feet, say at least four times daily, at every opportunity, and in every temptation. Now the emphasis for us today, which I believe God wants me to share, is this: the emphasis is to speed is coming by creating more opportunities to watch and pray daily. You the four times is fixed. The temptation may come, it may not come. In fact, it's difficult to pray during temptation. But the Lord says, the Lord just can say, watch and pray always. He didn't say sometimes. That may be accounted what you escape these things. Are you with me? Say to Peter, say, couldn't you watch me for one hour? Say, watch and pray so you don't fall into temptation. So you see, the way we are going to inherit this glory, the way we are going to see this thing is this season where the famine has begun, is for us to say, create. Create. More opportunities to watch and pray. Don't wait. Create the opportunity. Don't wait for the Holy Spirit to prompt you. It's good if it prompts you. Paul said, I will pray in the understanding. And I will pray with the Spirit. I said, the Spirit of the sub prophets are subject to pray. So create the opportunity. Create the opportunity. So the more of us that create the opportunity in our different areas of life. That's how we hasten the coming. That is the center. That is the focus of this message today. The more of us that begin to create, thank God we do it four times a day. Thank God we do it at every opportunity, at, at, at um, every temptation. But see, the more of us that begin to create the opportunity, 
the faster we hasten his coming. Are you with me? So, Luke chapter 12, verse 35 says, Let your loins be guarded about and your law and your lights burning. <laughs> what does that mean? It means that you see what I'm saying. This, 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 this opportunity, prayer and praying always, you can't do it effectively if there's not a background of intercession with groanings. That's why it's just joining Jesus is very, very important for us to join. And then you continue after. Are you with me? So, Luke chapter 12, verse 40 has begun to round up. The Lord just said something. He said, the son of man cometh in an hour that you think not. Let's look at that. But ye therefore, be ye therefore ready also. Now, let's read together. For the son of man cometh at an hour where you think not. Where do you think? In your mind, with your thoughts. For the Son of Man is coming and hour that you think not. So you must learn to pray now with your thoughts. It's going to come in an hour that you think not. Don't just say that an hour when you expect no. Take that word think. You think with your mind. You think with your thoughts. That is when it's going to come. Are you with me? So like I said some time ago, First Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 7 says, Pray without season. First Peter chapter, is it first Peter now? Chapter 4, verse 1. Says that he that has suffered in the flesh has what? Cease from sin. Are you following me? I repeat it again. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17 says, Pray without season. First Peter chapter 4, verse 1 says, He that has suffered in the flesh had what? Cease from sin. It says, Cease. So what I want to see is the issue of ceasing. So how do we cease from sin? How do we pastor's message recently? I'm preparing for this message. The only way that you and I can pray without ceasing is to pray with your thoughts. Now, even as I'm ministering, I can be communing with God in my thoughts. You begin to visualize those seven eternal things. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, the Word of God the blood of Jesus, the life of God, and the angels of God begin to fellowship at the third level. But if you don't have a background of battle prayer, that is what he talks about in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 1. He eat had, had suffered in the flesh. When you suffer self in the morning, when you pray good morning, Jesus, you have ceased from sin. Then now continue in the day. Now begin to pray with your thoughts to direct the power of God. Notice I say again, if there is no effective battle prayer, the prayer in your thought life that they cannot be strong. So you now begin to pray without ceasing with your thoughts. So what begins to happen is this. When a notification comes, if my phone is in my pocket, it will just beep. Nobody will know that God has spoken to me. They can now check and read. So in my mind, I'm communing with God. So God drops something in my mind like a text message. Or like a pastor will say, ah, God just dropped a tweet. Where it's in your mind, so I'll read it. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You know what is very, very important? I'm rounding up. It's because you look at the life of Elijah as a type. Elijah was used to seeing God in the earthquake and in the wind. You pass that season. When the season of a still small voice. If you notice when Jesus Christ was going to turn water to wine, there was no choir singing. He just heard the Father's voice and he obeyed. Just in his thoughts, fellowship, that speaks of intimacy. In the most holy place. Let's look at it as we round up. The Passover, earthquake. Matthew chapter 27, verses 51 to 53. The Bible said when Jesus Christ was resurrected, what happened? There was a great earthquake. Are we there? Okay, let me just keep talking. You don't have to turn there. There was a great earthquake. Says, and behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from top to bottom. And the earth did quake and the rocks rent. Next verse. What happened? And the grace that opened and many bodies of the saints which stepped arose. Talking about resurrection. That is Passover. Say Passover. That is how Elijah used to hear God. But God is no more in the earthquake. He left Passover. What does he left Passover? Not as we are not celebrating Passover, but he's moved into the holy place. In the holy place, what does he say? He said that uh, uh, Acts chapter 2, verse 2. He said that they were in one accord in the upper room. There was a sound from heaven. As of a rushing mighty wind, and he filled the house, and they, where they were sitting is no more there. He's now going to appear in this still small voice. Talks about intimacy with the Lord Jesus Christ. 
You know how you do for songs of Solomon. He said, don't, don't, don't wake my beloved up. Begin to whisper to you at the heart level. Second Kings chapter 19, verse 12. Second Kings chapter 19, verse 12. What does it say? Second Kings chapter 19, verse 12. No, I think that's the wrong scripture. 19, 12. Is that what it says? Where he's talking about the still small voice. He said that then, and then. First Kings, sorry, first Kings, not second Kings. I made a mistake. First Kings 19, 12. What does it say? He says that and after the say after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still small voice that speaks about the feast of tabernacles. I said, the master, they will go to a place, they will be eating. The choir is not singing. A man will drop, he will come, will heal him and continue eating. I said, that's it. Those words whisper to him. Heal him now. Not that we don't need the earthquake. What am I trying to say? Don't expect God to appear the way he appeared in the previous moves. Just like it now appear to Lord Jesus Christ the way he appeared to John the Baptist, the old move. His mother just said, they need wine. It was a conversation between the mother and the son. And he said, woman, what do I have to do with you? And he consulted with God. God said, turn the water to wine. Nobody knew. It was only the disciples that filled the six water pots and nobody knew. Everybody just drank new wine. The owner of the said, so there's no noise. Say no noise. All this noise that we make, we want one, one person. Then we'll come putting around it. No noise. That's how the master operated. Say, the voice shall you not hear in the streets. Yes. It will just do something. It will just disappear. Still small voice. You're praying in the morning. I got whisper to say, go and hit that man on that road there. And then you pull the man up. But Elijah was not ready to listen to that still small voice, so he was retired. So if you're not ready to hear what God is saying, you will not be retired in Jesus' name. So, okay. Let me get to nitty gritty as I, I stop. We pray without ceasing, with our thoughts, using the mercy of God. Jude 21. Say, looking, say, looking. For the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto what eternal life. That's what has taught us. So we keep ourselves love of God, looking for the mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. So how do we do this? That's what has taught us. I'll just summarize. He says, Lord, have mercy on me. That I'm saying this again. So those that are married for the first time, say, Lord, have mercy on me. That I'll be merciful to the unrighteousness and sin and iniquity that we have no more. So God of Jesus Christ cleanses you. So then he also comes to the life of God. With that life of God now, enters your soul and your body. And I begin to pray just you begin to look with your mind. Say, the son of man is going to come in an hour that you think not. So you have to think with your thoughts. I say, God, you be exceeding abundantly above what we are. all can think according to his power that works in us. So that's how it's going to happen. So what does he say? Like I said the other time, I, 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 when I studied pastors week Remar on praying with your thoughts, I, 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 I just said what I believe God told me. So you cease from sin when you pray without ceasing with your thoughts. I said together, you cease from sinning. You cease from sinning when you pray without ceasing with your thoughts. Because that's the only way, like Pastor said, you can actually pray without ceasing. Thank you for putting it on the board. You cease from sinning when you pray without ceasing with your thoughts. Or just pray without ceasing. Praise the Lord. So, that is how God wants us to hasten the coming of the Lord. Like I said earlier on, Joseph was out of prison in 2014. Joseph is 37 years old now. And the brothers are coming. Not only the brothers, but also the world is coming. Because there's a famine of reward in the land. And we must be ready as they come to show them forgiveness. Not condemn them for what they do. I say reaching out for them and saving them so as by fire. Are you following me? And then teach them the ways of God. That's what they are coming for. So that at the end of the day, we can disciple all nations and close this age in Jesus' name.